What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So today we're going to go over the Spare Incarnon. I honestly think this might be the best weapon for Week 6 Incarnon rotations, and we'll be going over that today. Uh, and this thing actually fits the bill for what a lot of people would view as a good Incarnon. So let me go over the checklist with you. We got AoE. We got building the Incarnon charge instantly. We got good hybrid stats. Uh, did I mention we have AoE? So, we have a pistol here that can do some good ad clear. It can do some good single target damage as well. I was surprised how fast this thing could kill Acolytes. And it's also got some decent versatility, too. Now, the only major problem with this thing, the spare, is that this weapon is actually viewed as a very rare weapon by a lot of people. If you've ever wondered, why am I getting so many dread blueprints from the Stalker? I never get the hate, never get the despair. That's because the drop rate is literally different. The dread drop rate, I think, is like 30%. His other weapons are 5%, so if you don't have this, I'd say it's still worth getting the Incarnon for whenever you do eventually get the blueprint, because it's really powerful. So we'll start off with just showing how it works. I'm going to show you all the Incarnon upgrades you can choose from and things of that nature. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you're sub because we do daily Warframe video uploads, and we also do live streams. All right, so this is the Spare Incarnon. I do have a full build on here. This is with no Riven and no outside buffs. So you just throw it easily. If you see one projectile right there, give me almost the entire Incarnon meter. Two shots easily, get, build your Incarnon meter. The way that the spare normally works is some throwing stars, honestly. They're very highly puncture focused with not great base stats. But that's where the Incarnon upgrades are going to help you out. They're going to give you some base stats. So, our build right now is a viral build. But this thing actually has some hidden stats, or it just might be a bug. So, we switch to Incarnon mode. Now, our build is a viral heat build. The Incarnon explosion, the, the, basically, the Incarnon mode is a delayed explosion with decent crit. And a big explosion radius. This is with Prime Fulmination right now. It's normally 5 meter explosion radius. So we're increasing that to almost 7 right now. As you can see, you just like barrage the area in uh, explosions. And it's lots of heat procs. There's lots of crits too. So a pretty nice one as far as, you know, high level enemies. Oh, by the way, this is with no Bane mod right now. So we're missing out on a ton of damage that we could be using on these enemies. But it's okay because I want those big explosions. So... That's what you could kind of expect. Primary shot, just some normal ninja throwing stars. In Karnon mode, they're still ninja throwing stars, but they have explosions now with built-in heat damage. Now, something I will definitely admit is that when you have a lot of multi-shot, look at how wildly they th the, the frame is throwing these all over the place. It is not good at range for, like, you know, focused damage. Of course, the, the, the primary non Karnon has decent spread, but look at those, those projectiles all over the wall, so... Keep that in mind if you're looking to use this. It is definitely more of a close range weapon. Things like ensnare and all that. Throw in a little bit of armor strip. That can be very nice. The guys should all be dead in one. So see, it, it can do good damage. It can. It really can. I'll show you some Steel Path gameplay. But let's first go over Incarnon choices and what uh, you know arcanes and upgrades I'd recommend to you here. So as far as our Incarnon options... I think there is one that is bugged, unfortunately, so let's start off with these Incarnate Upgrades. So the one I'm using right now is called Stalker's Vendetta. It increases our base damage by plus 60. The other option in this tier only gives you plus 50 base damage, and it's probably not working. This one seems to be working, um, and the way this one works is that it gives you the base damage, but also when you have the Dread and the Hate equipped, the other weapons of the Stalker, you get, in, uh, you get increased multi-shot by 30%, and you also will have multi-shot consume ammo directly from your capacity, increase damage by 100. So it's going to shoot through all your Incarnon ammo instantly. I would not really recommend using the hate and the despair, or using the hate and the dread when using this thing, because you're going to lose all your ammo all, like, right away. Uh, and that 3% multi-shot is not going to really make a big difference. So just use this one for the base damage increase. The other one is condition overload, uh, but it does not seem to be working. That only gives you 50 base damage. So until they fix that one... Just do the other one that gives you 60 base damage. But yeah, it's, uh, the other one's 50 base damage and the condition overload on direct uh, direct hits. Doesn't work. It wouldn't work on the explosion either, so we'll see. I, I think it should still be good. For tier 3, you got utility stats. I've gone with 100% increased reload speed. Throwing star weapons reload a lot. And to switch to Incarnon mode, it's affected by reload speed. So it's just a great Incarnon choice for this tier. I'd highly recommend going for this one. Uh, but the other ones are good too. Let's say you have a Riven mod with minus projectile speed. You got 50% uh, projectile speed increase. And we also got minus zoom as one of these options. So all good, but 100% reload speed is a lot of reload speed. The final tiers where your true choice will come in. I've gone Survivor's Edge, giving increased crit chance and status chance, making it hybrid because we have that built-in heat on the explosion of the uh, the Despair in Karnan. It's going to give us a lot more heat procs. 
And also, when you throw in some 60-60 status chance mods, you'll be getting over 100% status chance on that explosion shot. The build I'm going to show you is because is, is not going to have 266, it's going to have 160-60, but I'd recommend putting on 260-60s uh, overall. I have one, I only have 166 because my ribbon's a D polarity. The other one, uh, other choices, we have massive status chance increase of 24, or the other one is going to be a crit chance increase, uh, crit chance and crit damage increase. It's nice and all that, and I have a crit damage ribbon, so this could be potentially more damage. But really, that status chance upgrade, you can you can definitely feel that status chance upgrade on this thing. So I'd, I'd recommend going for the hybrid one. But the big crit increase is nice, too, as it gives you a crit chance and crit damage increase. Just going uh, to stick with the hybrid one here, Survivor's Edge, I believe it's called, um, to, to get good crit and status, because this thing has bad crit normally. You really need to get these crit upgrades, and that's why this thing needed it so badly. So my current evolutions are Stalker's Vendetta, Rapid Reinforcement, and Survivor's Edge. Let's show the build now, and, you know, since I said this thing has heat damage, uh, this UI screen would not tell you that, as you can see. It says in Carnon mode right here, there is no heat damage on this UI. So it's it's either a bug, or it's just... I, th I think it's just not showing the explosion, honestly. It's showing um, it's showing the, the upfront damage of the in Carnon mode, but not the explosion. The explosion has base heat, as we said, or as I said. Um, so yeah, Deep Freeze on here. Just replace this with a Viral 6060 mod, so the cold one. Can't fit that on there, but yeah. Uh, and then as far as Exilus mods, this thing needs a lot of formula to fit this all on here. Um, a maxed out lethal momentum will be great for increased uh, projectile speed, lets you hit enemies easier from further away. Um, energizing shot will work on this too. Even though it's AOE, this will pick up orbs for you while you're spamming your shots all over the place. Give you your full energy easily. And we've got Cascadia Flare. You might be like, okay, well, you're not building for heat. Why do you have Cascadia Flare? Cascadia Flare is going to be for the Incarnon mode specifically. Since it has so much AoE and we're rocking Prime Fulmination, we'll be getting heat procs all over the place, especially if you're running those 260-60 mods I was just talking about. So, decided to go for that. We also got Galvanized Shot for a little bit more status chance too. It's not going to work on the explosion, but the direct hits, you'll see the Acolyte just fall over pretty much. So, let's show the uh, the same setup here, but we'll use a Bane of the Grenier. So, you'll see a lot more damage from uh, just everything here. And then we'll hop into some Steel Path gameplay. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this one. I'd say if you have the Despair, you should get. If you don't if you don't have the Despair, it's not a must-have in Karnon. If you do have the Despair, it is a must-have in Karnon. So, yeah, in that way, it, it actually is really good. So now we have a lot less explosion radius, but we have a lot more damage. So it should just tear through these guys, like, near instantly. There, there you go. So if you like to spam shots and see explosions, this is a good weapon for that. And of course, a Corrosive Book could easily work, too. Just take that 60-60 uh, Cold Mod I was talking about and turn that into a 60-60 uh, Electric Mod and keep the Toxin one on there. It's just pretty satisfying to use it. It has nice sound effects. Got decent explosion radius. Like I said, 5 meters without without uh, Fulmination. And then with Fulmination, about a 7 meter explosion radius. And it does go through walls, by the way. I did, I did test it. It does go through walls. So certain frames that will be good with this one. Um, I'm actually really enjoying it with Ensnare Frost. If you think about it, and by the way, if you haven't given if you haven't given Frost a chance in a while, you should probably give Frost another chance uh, because he got buffed a lot like last year. Um, so with Ensnare Frost, I've got I've got grouping ability to get this explosion to cover more area. I've got uh, Frost Bubble to hide into like you know spam shots from. I've got his Avalanche to remove enemy armor, and with his Virable, that would be very nice. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much all that Frost really needs to do here. Um, you know, I, I, he technically cannot freeze acolytes. That's I'm also using biting frost. I forgot about that. Biting frost element for frost gives him increased crit chance and crit damage on frozen enemies, which is kind of cool. Because so, since this thing is not like it's it's got decent crit, it's not amazing crit. Uh, and this is with the hybrid incarnate right here. So yeah, we got a crit increase. We got a uh, well, an armor strip, and we got grouping up abilities. This acolyte is not going to have a good time. I went to ensnare them right where they spawn in, and I was surprised how much this viral build did to the acolyte. To be honest, so. Yeah, this is nice. Um, I definitely recommend this one. Now, here's the thing. I am going to be making an Incarnon tier list here pretty soon. Would I place this above the Atomos? I probably wouldn't. But I actually think this might have more uh, more focused DPS potential than the Atomos because it has two instances of damage. It's, it's got the uh, the direct hit and then the explosion. The explosion has heat damage on it. The uh, direct hit does not. But that's a lot of you know pot damage potential from two hits right there. Um and then heat, guaranteed heat procs on top of that, too. So Now, you know you also could try here? I, I have not tried this yet. You could put a, a gas uh, build on here, throw a toxin on, on your build, and um, you can you can turn that base heat on the explosion into gas damage. Should be very good with a build like this, where it's using armor strip and grouping up uh, enemies. But the viral build's working great, too. Here comes an Acolyte. 
And it shouldn't be that bad. And not bad for a viral build. I've definitely seen better. Um, the uh, Let's see if I can find another accolade in this clip. But, but basically, it, it's just really, really good for Steel Path. And it's a throwing star weapon, so we don't have that many throwing star weapons that, you know, are that are this good. I would definitely say the Kunai one is not this good. I believe the Kunai one was, like, homing, not uh, not um, AoE. If it was, if the Kunai one was AoE, I apologize, but there, there's also no Kunai Prime, which makes it a little bit less exciting, too. Um, so I would definitely say, if you have this thing, it's a must-have. Uh, do not buy the What Stalker bundle for this, please. Do not, pl please do not buy the What Stalker bundle for this. It's 800 plat. Uh, but, I mean, at the same time, this is very fun. I will be using this a good amount going forward. Um, I will try to use it on level 10k uh, enemies in the future, too. I have plans to do a, uh, a Vasto level 10, uh, Vasto level 10,000 video, a Despair level 10,000 video, um, well, maybe not video, but at least, like, get some footage for it. And then once the Zylock gets fixed, maybe I'll do that, too. And then once the Soma gets fixed, all that stuff, so. Really powerful. I'd recommend it. Um, it doesn't need armor strip. I was surprised at how fast I was able to kill these enemies without armor strip on some of them. Um, so yeah, I'd say go get it right now, guys. Um, let me know what, how you feel about the Despair Incarnate in the, in the comments down below. I do think it's the best weapon this week, actually. Um, especially since, you know, <laughs> spoiler, the Paris and Dread Incarnate are basically the same exact thing. So it just comes down to whichever one has the better base stats. And those those Incarnons on the Paris Prime are so strong that, I don't know, I, just, I feel like the Dread's not going to be able to compete with that as far as, like, actual, like, numbers it's pumping out. But we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to eventually trying it out or checking it out. Um, so yeah, not bad for a viral build. I'll see you guys next time, and take it easy. Peace!